Welcome back as Xbox Full Screen Experience which originally debuted on ROG Xbox Ally is now available on every Windows handheld PC. In this video I'll be trying it out on my ROG Ally that comes with Z1 Extreme processor. Microsoft is gradually rolling out the update. If you haven't received the update yet, you'll receive it soon. In this video I'll be testing a few games in this mode. We'll compare their performance with the standard mode. For the inverse, Xbox Full Screen Experience is a dedicated gaming environment on Windows platform for handheld PCs. It's not just a skin. Our PC can directly boot into this mode, load a condensed form of Windows. This mode prioritizes resources for our games, blocks any unwanted apps running in the background. In a way, it's similar to Steam Deck's gaming mode. It also offers a unified library of games. Games from Steam, Ubisoft Connect, Battle.net, PC Game Pass, Epic Games, all of them will show up here. Just make sure you have whitelisted these digital store platforms via Xbox PC app. I'll quickly show you this. Xbox PC app is open. Click on your profile. Click on settings. Click on library and extensions. And enable the toggle corresponding to the digital store platform. We can access our games through a streamlined and controller friendly UI. I have connected my Fly DC Vader 4 Pro controller to LF app Bluetooth mode X input controller. Open my library in the games box art you will see the digital store platforms icon in the bottom left corner mirage via game pass cyberpunk 2077 via steam it's very simple at any time you can boot into xbox full screen mode from normal windows mode via xbox pc app by clicking on xbox full screen here in the top right corner okay in order to optimize the performance we need to restart our device it will automatically boot into this mode. We need to configure one setting in order to do this automatically. Stay on desktop. Click on the windows icon here. Click on settings. Click on gaming. Click on full screen experience. Check this setting. Enter full screen experience on startup. Click on the drop down bar next to choose home app and select Xbox. I'll show you my windows build version system about Windows 11 Home version 25H2 OS build version 26200.7171 I'll just restart my ROG Ally now Restart Ally straight away booted into Xbox full screen mode Its UI is the same as Xbox PC app Go to my library Now if you want to switch to a normal mode of Windows All you need to do is open Task Switcher By swapping up from the bottom edge of the display Tap on Windows Desktop, tap on Continue, Normal Windows, loaded up, Xbox PC app opened up, back to Xbox Full Screen Experience mode. First I'll be testing Cyberpunk 2077, I have set the UMA buffer size to 5GB, see in Steam, Steam version of the game. My is running on BIOS version 3.4.2, install LS latest official GPU driver optimized for Black Ops 7, Steam is starting. I'll be using Afterburner to show you the performance stats. I have added Afterburner to my Steam library, so I'll launch it first. Yeah, it's running. You can use Task Switcher to check the apps that are running in the background. Steam, Afterburner, Xbox app. I'll just close it. Go back to Steam. Start Cyberpunk. I'm not using any mods. I'm using the in game medium graphics preset. Upscaler set to XCSS2 using its quality preset. Not using frame generation, all of the post processing effects disabled. Medium to high settings. 900p resolution display mode windowed borderless VSync off. Using a 27 watts manual profile on 3 power value set at 27 watts CPU boost disabled. Enable 1% lows. I am in Little China, standing right outside V's apartment building. The FPS here is close to 45. VRAM usage is around 3.8 GB and RAM usage is around 10 GB. I have set the UMA buffer size to 5 GB. Drive my vehicle around, change the camera perspective, much better. This game is nicely optimized on PC platform. Oh my god! Almost ran over that cop. <laughs> they are angry after me. In this particular sequence is very demanding, lot of NPCs here. Performance is stable. Oh no, went off track. FPS stays close to 45 
I'm solving some texture shimmering in the background. It's highly recommended to use OptiScaler mod in this game to improve the image quality. You can even use FSR for OptiScaler intake model on our DNA 3 GPUs. The FPS stayed around 45, average FPS 46, 1% lows 32. VRAM uses around 3.7 GB. RAM uses stayed within a range of 9.5 to 10 GB. I'll play the same sequence in normal Windows mode. Switch to the normal mode, Windows desktop. These are the apps that are running in the background after one RTSS SW info, head run lens software, Windows Defender, play. Load the exact same sequence. Yeah, RAM usage is around 10 GB, VRAM usage it's around 3.7 GB. I'm in little China. 1% lows, 35, drive my vehicle. I'm not expecting a big difference in terms of performance between Xbox full screen experience mode and desktop mode. I'm getting the same performance. One percent loss exactly the same value. Average FPS forty five again. So identical performance in Cyberpunk. Now I'll test the next one. Now I'll run a very poorly optimized game. Monster Hunter Wilds, it's the Steam version. Switch back to full screen experience mode. Close Xbox PC app. After one is running in the background. Start Monster Hunter Wilds. Display mode portal has Windows 720p resolution. No FPS cap applied, VSync disabled using the in game lowest preset upscaler FSR using its balance preset. Not using frame generation. Other settings just disable post processing effects wherever possible. And jump into the game 720p resolution 27 watts manual profile. UMA buffer size set to 5 GB. There's a character. I started a quest called my sacred. It will automatically lead us to an objective. Can be a bit difficult to simulate the exact same sequence. Here we are getting 30 FPS here. Game runs very poorly in the open world areas. As you can see, FPS dropped to around 22. VRAM usage it's close to 4.2. 9 GB VRAM usage around 10 GB monster that we are hunting. Yeah, FPS stays within a range of 22 to 25 in the open world area. Show you some combat as well. Very poorly optimized game, sneak attack. Average FPS 27. At start we were getting a higher FPS value, it was close to 32, dropped down significantly when we venture into the open world, switch to normal windows mode, exit, windows desktop, continue, these are the apps that are running in the background, vsoft connect, not sure how it got enabled, closed it, after one play. Side the same quest, it's called my sacred. Here we are getting around 30 FPS. Left the cave in the open world. FPS will drop to around 22. VRAM usage is around 4.7 GB, still increasing. RAM usage around 9.3 GB. The FPS dropped to around 23. In full skin experience mode, hey, we were getting around 22 FPS. Performance difference is well within the margin of error. Roughly the same performance in normal Windows mode. Average FPS 27. Okay, I'll engage in combat. This game will be receiving a new update in December that will improve the 
in-game performance. I hope it's true. And just read a blog post by Capcom. Okay, now I'll test the next game. For Spider-Man 2, I'll change the UMA buffer size to 6 GB. I'm in full screen experience mode. Spider-Man 2, see in Steam. After burner running in the background, close Xbox PC app, switch to Steam. Start Spider-Man 2. Launcher popped up, settings. 720p resolution, XCS subscale enable, using its quality preset, frame generation disable, VSync off. Again, I'm not using any mods, using the in-game low graphics preset with post-processing effects disable, 27 watts manual profile. Yeah, we are in. There's Spider-Man. This game suffers from traversal stutters. Just swing around the city, follow the sand trail, keep an the FPS counter. 43 to 48 FPS, not bad. VRAM usage is close to 5.2 GB. RAM usage around 9.2 GB. 1% close, close to 29. Engaging combat. Sand PCs should be popping up. There they are. Yeah, this drop to 33 for a second. Spam abilities. Game has received many updates since its release. Performance is still pretty average. It's a bit disappointing considering how well Spider-Man 1 used to run on raw Galaxy. Budget friendly PCs. Average FPS 42. Okay, I'll test the same sequence in normal Windows mode. Exit. Windows desktop. Continue. And these are the apps that are running in the background, same as before. Play. Okay. With the exact same sequence, here we are getting around 60 FPS on rooftop. Swing around the city. FPS drop to around 44 44 to 50 FPS VRAM is close to 5.1 GB Average FPS value it's close to 50 Show you some combat Yeah here average FPS value will drop 1% lows will also drop Sand particle effect is quite heavy For some reason 1% loss 25 Enemy spawn Average FPS value 45 So again roughly the same performance With Xbox full screen experience mode and normal windows mode on ROG LA Oh my god Taking a hard beating Don't remember the controls Trying to use my abilities There you go Staggered this thing Miran usage is around 5.1 GB, RAM is around 9.2 GB. Okay, time to conclude the video. It's a step in the right direction for Windows platform, offers a console like UI, which is controller friendly, also has a unified game library. But I'll be honest, I didn't observe a big difference in terms of performance in games that I tested using this mode compared to standard Windows mode. This mode is fairly new, its performance may improve in the future. You may also get better results in some other games. That's it for the video guys, I hope you find it useful. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.